Hello there everyone and welcome back to the mod that makes me really happy, TNO. Of course using the Golden Expanded mod as well, but we gotta talk about the first promotions. The uh, Big Daddy cut a striking figure in his ceremonial outfit, a field marshal standard with modifications including a small half cape, a substantial amount of gold trimming, a veritable wall of metals adorning the breast, and of course his trademark jewel encrusted a baton, the Big Daddy. I not had the chance to indulge himself in such a manner since before the Civil War, and this occasion was the perfect opportunity to present his grandeur as a new master of Germany to the people, and more importantly to the military, normally. The promotion of an officer, even an exceptional one as it was the case here, would not call for such pageantry, or at least that would be the state of affairs under a certain Adolf guy, but Goring was not Adolf. And that was no secret. His passion for opulence and appearance was a critical factor in all that he did, and now that he was free to do as he pleased. Public events would become much more frequent and much more grandiose. Besides, the Big Daddy wished to celebrate those officers who had served him so well against the traitors. Hans Spado called, a, called from a role. Johannes Steinhoff, please step forward. Spado's presence was supremely important. These were the officers that were selected to counterbalance Shona's clique, for whether they, their support for Goring or Spado didn't matter as long as they were not lacking to the chief of the OKW. The man that I just called up was uh, one of those handpicked by the Big Daddy himself, Steinhoff, like himself, had the blood of a pilot through and through, and Goring had already marked him as one of the keep close by his side. This promotion would allow the much deserved ma deserving man to lead the Luftwaffe to glory now that the Goring was personally above it, directing his actions, more importantly. It would give Goring or Herman a much needed reprieve from the duties of the office. Herman smiled as he placed the shoulder straps of a General de Luftwaffe on Steinhoff's uniform and gave him an almost paternal pat on the back as a newly minted general moved in to retake his seat. Herman would make the Wehrmacht his own, officer by officer. Spado checked Steinhoff's name and moved on to the next one down. Oberst Hans Toysen stepped forward and pried on the daddy. Herman, 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 the former president of the Reichstag, former minister president of Prussia, and above all, the man who, from its birth up to its greatest victories over the Allies and the vanquished Soviets, created the vast Luftwaffe. Now he is a big daddy of the Reich. Now he is the man who saved Germany from all other enemies, both within and without. No longer shall Alexa Speer dare to corrupt the youth with delusions of freedom. No longer shall the Elk of Hedrich seek to break the Reich under the influence of the traitor Himmler. And no longer shall the dude Hill Bowman hope to trap the people in the false bliss of the status quo. Unlike these men, the great hero of a new Germany, lifting it by the dirtied hand out of the ashes of a terrible civil war launched by these jealous men. Never again shall Germany be without a hero as mighty as bold and as single-minded as a big daddy. Therefore, it is declared that each and every building possessed by the government, that each and every structure owned by the public, shall bear his portrait. Though he may not always be with us in person, he shall always watch over us in spirit. The raiders and televisions too shall declare what a wondrous leader he is. They shall proclaim his victories and speak of his men, who are brave enough to meet the challenge of protecting his new Germany. For the people, who believe that the best way forward in the future, through the drudgery of time, through the difficulties of war and the decay of peace, is only in the never-ending confidence and the strength of our armies, fleets, and soaring wings, just like in the wars fought so long ago to reclaim the glory lost in the First World War. So shall our future conquest be for the good of Germany's happiness. Our faith in our dear Führer Goring, just as we have placed faith in Hitler. So shall we give him our deepest and most unshakable faith. Germany forever shall be victorious, and Germany alone shall live on. Germany above all, above all in the world, and prepare the new Germany. Germany proper has once again been stabilized, and the traitors and pretenders destroyed. Now it is time for us to reclaim a rightful living drama as we did two decades ago. Thankful it will be somewhat easier this time, with no Soviet Union to contest our mastery of Europe. Only. Our former subjects exist to oppose us. The Americans and Japanese are halfway a world, uh, half a world away, and once we are certain control, we are ready for them, as we will do Warplan Zero or prepare the army. The Wehrmacht was shattered in the Burgo Creek, split into four, and set against itself. While we may have gained the greatest share, more than half of our officers cannot be trusted, and who knows how many enlisted men. A putting down is required. Further still, the war proved our tactics outdated and are here old fashioned. It must be reformed if we are to re reassert control over Europe and so that we may crush our enemies, see them driven before us, and hear the lamentations of, of course, their women. What, what could be better than that? Um, anything else really care? Disable mad mechanic. Ooh, oh, okay. We could disable all this stuff, which is actually kind of nice to have, but... Um, we're still getting there, but South Africa is falling apart very quickly, which I love. For your industrial plan first, we may talk about the uh, about the renewed Germany, but it's time to, talk, to walk the walk. 
Our factories lie in ruins, our streets are paved with rubble, and our fields are filled with the dead. We must rectify this before any attempt is made to restore control outside of the Reich's core. Learning from one's own mistakes is good, but learning from our enemies is better. The Soviets had a good idea or two while they were around, and the four-year plan is the one that Fuhrer and his economic wisdom has set his sights on. Our industrial planets will drop the estimates, how fast can steel production be brought back to pre-war levels, how quickly can roads between supply centers be repaved, how quickly can chemical production be expanded, a deadline makes everyone work harder. That, this very much is true. Makes me work harder, I promise you that. And we've won the South African War. Hello. Uh, there you go. Ah, top. Well, it looks like he's uh, really a sea wolf type of guy. Uh, we got a lot of sea wolves. Naval AA. Ironside, sub attack. Put cumber, that would make more sense for us. So, Ring of Power. A. Goran carefully handed his, his nephew his ring. Carefully depositing it into the palm of the man's hand. Heinrich studied it with intense fascination, boring and all. The Fuhrer smiled boyishly with delight now. This one, Heinrich. This was made by Herr Zeitner when I became a Reichsmarschall. See the insignia on the side? Heinrich nodded in rapture with the spectacle of the object. Had it been anyone else, Heinrich thought suddenly he would have haggled it for right then and there, but since his uncle would never part with a symbol of his power and success, not even for all the gold of the Swiss. Apparently Heinrich was not as unreadable as he had hoped, because his uncle seemed to have understood his inner thoughts. It is marvelous, isn't it? Of course, you could have always had one for yourself if you wanted it. But, uh, Uncle, I'm not a Rex Marshal. Heinrich, you're a goal ring, and I take care of my family. I'm sure I can find something for you to ma manage. Give me some time, and I'll get you a good position. Something nice and quiet, but hopefully not too boring. Besides, I may need you to take on some important responsibility soon, and this ought to be a good experience for you. A little nepotism never hurt anybody, right? It just pucks of the job. That's right. Pucks of the job. And you're going to train until you die. Um... Where are we? Ah, oh, good. So we won this war. As deservedly so. The Goring Yunda. Yuin. Arthur Axman paused at the door to his fierce study, taking his time to wipe any small specks of dirt and dust away from his uniform before straining it with almost robotic motions. Satisfied with his appearance, the aging former head of the Hitler Junger pushed open the door and strode into the room. Clicking his heels together with surprising energy, he gave the familiar salute that now came with a twist. Heil Goring! The old hawk seemed bemused by the subordinate's clear attempts at flattery. Minister Axman, it's very good to see you. How has your new position been treating you? Axman cleared his throat, making sure to consider his uh, <clears throat> response, lest he upset the most powerful man in Europe. On the whole, I must say I quite enjoy the role, but more than that, I say, my fear. I am eternally grateful and humbled by the trust you have placed in me as your foreign secretary. Good, that's very good to hear. Axman detected, detected the hint of something in his leader's voice, but what it was eluded him. Some new plans, no doubt, but Goring was hardly capable of keeping secrets for long, as if he had heard his minister's innermost thoughts. Goring's next remarks revealed what had been on his mind. You know, Otto, I've been working on a new project with Herr Mokkol at HJ headquarters. A fine organization, indeed, but then again, I hardly need to tell you about that, of all people. Axman chuckled politely, wondering where this was headed. Well, anyhow, Goring picked up this place again. The HJ was all well and good, but it made us with Adolf, you understand? Well, he's gone, and I am now the leader of the Reich. Do you understand? Axman realized at once what he meant and nodded vigorously. Goring's smile broadened. Excellent. I have all the papers and orders prepared, but I would not dream of having the dedication ceremony for my Goring Yugen without anyone but yourself, Otto. Why, you would be in charge of it were you not already engaged, but no matter. I offer you to you the role of Reichsführer Goring Yugen. A uh, ceremonial title, but incredibly prestigious. Take a seat and I'll tell you all about it. The personality cult begins anew. Lose a little bit more political power, but hey, we actually end up with a lot more stability, so I'm kind of okay with that. Beautiful. Ah, uh, pride and gold ring. Who is not prideful of this man? Go of him humiliated. Once again, German arms have carried the day against the uh, decadent capitalists and their Judeo Bolshevik overlords. The South Africans and their patrons in the OFM believe that in the wake of the civil disturbances taking place in the fatherland that they have finally found their chance to assault our settlements in Africa. What they did not account for was the personal ingenuity and courage of our loyal Reichskommissars. The name Siegfried Müller, Hans Hutig, and the Wolfgang Schenk will forever live on in the annals of the thousand-year Reich as the embodiment of what it meant to be a true Aryan warrior. The anguish in Washington can almost be felt here in Germania, but such is the price of their own failure. Our righteousness and their cowardice has been proven in blood and fire as in, in the old days. Split the boars. Hutig went road and took over Africa for himself. First among equals in Africa. Oh god. 
Allows the reorgan in South Africa to be under a rule, which helped if the crisis were emerging for a continent. Let's, let's keep going this, right, this way. Add the German economy. National debt will decrease. GDP will decrease. I'm glad we got two, bi two billion more in GDP from the last episode then. Holy crap. Oh, let's go with the first among equals in Africa. Well, our friends the Boers and our sons in the Reich's Commissariat may have shorted of the brunt of the battle. It is important for them to remember that they would not be in a position to even be in Africa were not for the far-sighted policies of the fatherland that established the colonial outposts of civilization in the depths of such a savage continent. It seems only fair to us in Germania, therefore, that we reap the harvest that we sued at the end of the last war. So we skim some cream off the top. There's nothing unfair or wrong about it at all. It should merely be thought of as a finder's fee for setting our glorious triumph in motion. And the hero returns. Shapato stared out of the window of the plane. He stared and saw below, an industrial mess below, uh, with factories stretching as far as the eye could see. He supposed this was necessary to keep the Reich's war machine running, but it was still an eyesore. Smog billowed out of chimneys, polluting the once blue sky with a sea of gray and black. Was this really what Shapato had spent his time fighting for? It was almost powerless now. In his assignment to Africa, Shona had been able to act unopposed in his schemes at taking control of the Reich for himself. Shapato didn't understand why he needed to gain this much control. It was a militarist, after all. And the militarists who had won the war. It was an enigma. It was an enigma that was not Shpado superior. The thought of Shona as a superior made Shpado want to vomit. And there was Herman too, that petulant bastard. He knew how to command anything, much less the Reich. He barely knew that. He had saved the Reich in Africa, and this was his reward. Going back to two idiots who didn't know how an economy was supposed to function, if Shpado just hopped on a plane to America on a foreign military mission, he could. Shpado stopped himself. He had a duty to the fatherland, after all. He couldn't desert now, not like this. The plane had landed. Shpado's back in the Reich. Welcome home! Greatly increased the loyalty to the militarists and decreased influence. Shbad adds Shpado's triumph influencer, which decreases influence and increases loyalty with a small amount. A total victory and its aftermath. For a nation it, uh, which is still recovering in the, from the wounds made by the German Civil War, our victory in the South African War has increased our standing with the people more than ever. Our wildest expectations. Every day, newspaper, every day the newspapers, televisions, and radios are filled with reports about how greater successes in interview with soldiers from the Africa Corps that just returned from the battlefield and spontaneous... Well, spontaneous celebrations can be seen in every city in the Reich. <coughs> True people, many of you remember the old days when we conquered Paris, destroyed the Soviets, and defeated the Russian remnants. While such a victory cannot be compared with those great victories we achieved before, the first victory against the Western powers after the Civil War has still made people passionate about what we're going to achieve in the future. Retired old put uh, on their old medals and tell stories or veterans put, uh, and tell stories about their performance in the past. Younglings are gathering in the conscription stations wishing to return or wish to win their own glory in such an unstable and exciting age. The Reich is now a sea of joy and all doubts about our newly secured government have disappeared in the dust. However, there are still some troubling consequences coming along to the good ones. Those militaries who didn't like us from the beginning has gained more popularity and prestige by this victory. They open declare that the Reich needed directly to take her, uh, out her enemies so that we can become the ruler of the rule world through blood and fire. Though for now the situation is still under control, we may still need to keep a close eye over those detestable and ignorant beasts. Rejoice, but remember to keep calm, my friend. Time for a break. <clears throat> Goring sat at his desk, a stack of unexamined papers, reports, and a memorandum regarding the recently won South African War. Sitting him to the side, the Fuhrer of the German Reich was, in a word, bored. He was desperately searching for something interesting to do, his mind racing from idea to idea without settling on a single one for very long. Inspect the tanks again? Nah, he had done that too many times since the Civil War had ended and was getting stale. Head of the opera? He liked that one, but Shona would be too furious to make it worth it. Designing a new wing for Kyron Hall? Well, oh, that sounded enjoyable, but what if? He sprang from his seat in a flash of inspiration and snatched up one of the many phones for the numerous important connections he had to call on a daily basis. This particular phone was marked OKW Headquarters. Yeah, uh, yes, this is Phil going. Yes, yes, see Heil. Is Rommel still there? Good, good. Put him on quick. Quiet blanketing the room for a few minutes while the heaviest dictator, a heavyset dictator, waited with barely contained excitement. Then a new voice came through the other end of the line. Mein Fuhrer, Rommel's voice was still professional as ever. Even in retirement, how can I be of assistance to you? Goring's face pulled into an almost impish grin. Herr Rommel, pack your things. I'm going on a tour of African lands and I want you to join me. I I suppose I couldn't refuse such a request from Mein Fuhrer, now could I? Goring's mask of geniality collapsed for a moment. No, you absolutely cannot, Owen. How foolish of me, Mein Fuhrer. Please forgive me. Support the Boers. The Boer people have proven themselves capable and worthy allies during the war in South Africa. They are quick to realize that the British overlords were only puppets of Jews and communists, and even his own Germanic stock was naturally repelled to such degeneracy. It lit in them the fires of independence. As a reward for their service, we have opted to give them the land of their former oppressors in the Cape, along with their own ancestral land. As for the token of goodwill, the Führer has personally signed off on the deployment of two divisions of good German soldiers to garrison these regions against native and South African terrorists looking to trouble the new masters. To a long and happy friendship with the Boers. 
The new Reichsmarschall Heinrich Theodor Göring attempted to study the faces of the officers in attendance for his formal promotion ceremony. There was Schorner, his face harsh, his lips held in a line so thin and straight it might have come from a surgeon's scalpel. It was never good at interpreting the emotions of the ruthless commander, save for when he was furious, but it seemed plain that he was not enjoying the event. A few empty seats away sat Spidel, who at least lacked his rival's unnerving countenance. Still, even if he wasn't as utterly humorous as a butcher, he didn't seem all that particularly happy either. But so what? They weren't the Fuhrer, they weren't in charge, and they weren't being promoted. Let them sulk, Goring thought to himself as he watched his uncle ascend to the dais where he had presided as president under the late Hitler. He would show them that he too could lead armies across Europe and beyond. What could they do but sit and watch? Sure, they might play tough and king of the hill, but at the end of the day, it was his uncle whose word was law of the land, and it was Heinrich who could sway his uncle. He had not tried to let his smile show as his uncle invited him to stand beside him, to bask in the glory of the occasion, as the assembled delegates of the party cheered and cheered. He could be sure that he had been successful, but it hardly mattered. The Fuhrer carefully christened Heinrich's finger with a ring just like his own. The Fischer crowned his nephew as the first Reichsmarschall des Militärischen Transports. A new actor emerges, stage right. Fantastic. Even though our growth is not very good, at least we have a surplus, and where to visit? With the South African War finally over, Fuhrer Goring has made the decision to tour the re-established domains of the Reich. Such a move will serve both as a reminder of the three mainland Reich's commissars that they have an ultimate loyalty to the Big Daddy, even though that position may have changed hands. But at the same time, we'll make an excellent snub to those pathetic nations that were utterly embarrassed in their efforts to back South Africa. The question now is where Fuhrer Goring should head. Siegfried Müller in Central Africa would no doubt be able to regale the leader of the Reich with tales of exotic hunts and daring mercenary adventures. Shanks' shared experience in the sky with Goring will surely make for many an enjoyable evenings spent in nostalgia Hans Hutig of West Africa. May not be much of a conversationalist or host, but he did do the most to achieve this uh, his victory for the German people, and deserve proper congratulations. As always, the final decision is up to Fear Goring. Fellow Ace? Fear nothing? Mueller? Mm -mm. I kind of want to go with Mueller. He's a fun dinner guest, and that's what we need. We need excitement in our lives, my friends. Oh, well, also, I did do... I did edit the... I didn't really edit, edit it, but... Um, we do have some dockyards. We actually probably need to make more dockyards for the like, navy we want to make for the future, so... Uh, oh god. Can we not make any more navy? Oh, there are navy dockyards. There you go. And we're making more roads, too, so why not? Support the bulls. Praetorian Triumph. The triumph of National Socialism in the African continent calls for a grand parade like the like, likes of which have never been seen in the untamed land. The victorious and battle-hardened Reich Commissariat and Boer forces deserve their chance in the spotlight, their faces and arms broadcast to every household in the Reich to watch with awe and pride. Dr. Goebbels himself could not script a better propaganda victory. At the same time, this display will be motivating our people back home. It also served to rub the noses of the OFN dogs in their failure, destroying their citizens' faith in their weak and ineffective leaders, hopefully. It will cause enough resentment to occupy them for the time being and keep them from further interfering with their rightful sphere of influence. A vacation in Central Africa. <coughs> and this one, Lex Commissar Müller, gestured to the stuffed head of a line adorning the mantelpiece of the dining hall of the Hitlerstadt retreat. Now, this one was quite the hunt. Let me uh, Had me on for two days before I managed to bring him to ground off of Lake Victoria. Goring is there admiringly at the trophy before letting out a slow whistle. What a mighty beast indeed, Herr Müller. It shows a mark of a true Aryan to have the skill and courage to take his life. Müller seemed disinterested in that particular compliment and began to point out the other prominent trophies hanging upon the walls, basking in the praise delivered to him by the Fuhrer as he shared his many adventures. Naturally, the victorious Reichskommissar and the still freshly anointed Fuhrer were the centerpiece of the dinner, but they were hardly alone, while the two bon vivants were caressing. General Wilhelm von Thoma took the chance to converse with his former superior and other now retired General Feldmarschall Rommel. You know, von Thoma offered. As well as noticeably discharged with emotion, I never forgot what you taught us in North Africa, sir, and I will never let my men forget it either. The words of praise clearly affected the old warrior, Herr Thoma. It means more to me than you could have guessed to hear that I had some value to the future soldiers of my fatherland. It brings me some comfort in my twilight years. Herr Rommel, Herr Thoma, the loud voice of the Fuhrer interrupted the tender moment. We should both get some sleep. Remember that we have a hunt with our Rex Commissar tomorrow, and he promises it will be an exciting one. The two battle-weary-eyed men sighed, but dutifully obeyed. Oof, not good. Fresh other presses are helping us out, and we can't even do anything else. But we're to visit with the South African War finally over. Um, oh. I read this one earlier. A uh, fellow ace. We probably have to meet with all of them, don't we? Praetorian Triumph. Beat out the bushfires, despite a total and utter victory, seems that certain nuisances have determined themselves to continue to act as a thorn in her side as long as they can. Natives, former South African military units, even all offense stayed behind partisans, have all been harassing her supply lines and outposts in the weeks following her triumph. We cannot allow this. To do so would be to embarrass ourselves onto the world stage. What kind of power is unable to control its own territory? 
If these fools wish to be dragged out kicking and screaming, then so be it. The fear has given the Rex Commissar Hootig full leeway to eliminate these stains in any manner he sees fit with much, as much of a stockpile as he might require. <coughs> Fantastic. Nostalgia in Sweet Africa. Goring checked out as Rex Commissar Shank described in hilarious detail the antics he had gotten himself up to as a young pilot. The fear reflected upon the fact that his host, who had been quite sullen and quiet up to this point, had almost seemed to come back alive when the topic of flying was mentioned. Goring had never considered himself a uh, clairvoyant in matter of the heart, but even he was adept enough to recognize that the man was clearly more home amongst the clouds than in an office. Perhaps, the fear of thought inwardly, it could have been a man if uh, things had gone differently. So I've been told you were born here in Sweet West Africa under the old Imperial Colony. Yes, my Imperium, in Vinhook. I see, I see. Did you know that my late father was the first colonial commissioner there? I suppose we both have a connection to one another, both in the lands we are tied to and the professions we have chosen. You are no doubt my, right, my fear, but I must confess I believe I share nothing of your ability to lead others, much less a nation. Perhaps growing me is clearly appreciating the flattery, but we cannot all be fear material, can we? We all must have our part to play in the hierarchy of life, just as just as there are as apex predator in every food chain. I was simply destined to serve the gym people as their leader. Shank said nothing to the self adulating billowing forth from the, his leader's mouth in a cloak of full modesty. Modesty. Uh, my fear, Shank seems somewhat reluctant to speak. Perhaps sometime soon we could discuss a possible change of a position. I must admit I do not truly feel up to this most important tasks of it any longer. Goring nodded, but his attention was fixed on the trays of food being brought in by the native servants. If a man screams and no one listens, does he still make a sound? Mm -hmm. We're going to need this political power. And Hutig is next. The Praetorian Triumph. Fear Goring visited Pretoria for a joint military parade between the triumphant Africa Shield and the newly formed oh, oh, uh, Boer Republic. Ooh. It stopped, okay. The event was reported to have been massive, blocking most of the roads of the city in an extravagant display of military strength. Fia Goring had reportedly been very impressed with the Shield's troops, commenting that they might have to train ours instead of us training them. After the parade, Goring congratulated multiple politicians from the victorious countries on the parade strength, especially West Africa. The small number of West African officials present received these comments well before hurrying off, while praise was primarily directed to West Africa. The other nations seemed to like the Fia's comments as well, and many speculate that the colonies in the Reich proper may grow closer soon. I think Africa is going to be fine. The ultimate culmination of a victory in South Africa is at Ham. When the entire continent is essentially secured against the future of incursions, we can begin the process of reintegrating the shield into the pact. While having our African colonies back is already a great triumph, it is compounded by the addition of our new Boer allies, who will be worthy inheritors of the southern tip of the dark continent. All this was, of course, thanks to the genius statecraft of the Fuhrer. His inspiring vision and passionate devotion to the German people has made the revitalization of the Reich a reality even so soon after the Civil War. It allows to reorganize South Africa to be under rule, which would help if a crisis were to emerge for a continent, we get more G GDP growth, which we get used immediately. Our power rate begin to improve, and the Reich's Commissariat of Zentral Africa uh, becomes an autonomous uh, Reich's Commissariat of us. Once again, beautiful. I love it. They will be part of us whether they like it or not. <sighs> fear and loathing in West Africa. The Fuhrer was trying his hardest to make conversation with the almost uncomfortably taciturn Rex Commissar. You know, my father was a colonial governor of much as you are now, Herr Hotig, yes. He was in charge of the Imperial Colony of Sweet West Africa, and much like you, he had the burden of bringing civilization to this poor excuse for a continent. Nothing. Not even an acknowledgement that he had heard Goring speak. If the man had not been responsible for the recent victory in the war, the Fuhrer would seriously consider having him removed and sent to wallow behind a desk deep in... Welfschanzi. So far, Goring thought the only thing he had made this visit even semi-bearable was the excellent cognac that Hutig had provided. It was frankly astonishing to the former Rex Marshal that a man with such an unpleasantly austere personality would keep such a collection. He made a mental note to carry off as much as he could upon his return to Germania. Just as the Fuhrer was beginning to lose all hope of ever getting his companion to engage in any sort of discussion, the Ost African Rex Commissar seemed to burst into a frenzy of animated movement and speech like a jack-in-the-box springing out. My Fuhrer! My Fuhrer! It is good to finally be able to talk to you in person. Goring was about to return to the compliment, but Hutig did not let up. We must talk about the others. I have very important information regarding them. Very important information. His words came into to staccato bursts, like a fire from a Sturmgewehr. Goring was completely taken aback. Hey, Hutig, please, better settle down. If you have something so serious to discuss, I'm sure we can talk it over at some other time in a more official capacity. The words seemed to snap Hutig back to reality, or so Goring believed when the man stopped his infernal shouting. As the Fuhrer handed his host a glass of cognac and began to attempt to entertain him with the old war stories, he did not notice the dark, almost glassy look that had settled on the disturbed zealot. He similarly failed to notice the twitching of the man's eyes or the curling of the man's fists. No, the master of the wreck was ever as clueless as ever. 
of course. But for four-year industrial plan, though, just as before the war, Goring is once again in the charge of the economy of the Reich, back when, when Germany was forged from the chaos of the Weimar Republic into a power, whom would reestablish itself as a proper ruler of Europe. Now the Führer shall once again shape a Germany devastated by the Civil War back into its proper position. As someone set up a new four-year plan, as for the details of the plan, there are a few important questions that have to be determined eventually, such as slaves or foreign workers, debt reduction and austerity. Or new financial policies versus the strength of the flesh. Surely the Fuhrer would make the correct choice, of course. Where to visit? Home. It is time to go home, my friends. Hey, so we really plus. 97%, not bad. <coughs> what purpose civilian factories? We, we do need more production units. Schoen and his supporters brought forward a proposal to convert various underused factories that were uh, until now producing consumer goods in a heavy industry, heavy industry and arms factories, as always for the good of the Reich, and to ensure that the Wehrmacht has the strength it needs, of course. Now implementing this will obviously reduce our capacities in the civilian industry as well as the economic costs needed for conversion, but we need uh, to show his clique ha have Schoen and his clique happy for now or the consequences might be consequential. So we might just grant them this, after all, who needs plowshares when you can use swords to get the grain? Darn it. Well, it does seem like we got more growth. Darn it. Integrate the Netherlands. Focus on integrating the Netherlands, but due to this, we'll be unable to further loot the former Reich's Commissariat. Thus, shall finally join their Germanic brethren in the Greater German Reich, forming five new Reich Skawa, earning us cores in the formerly Dutch lands, which I would love to do. I think that's fantastic. What happened to our. Div oh, our divisions are here. Because we had to separate them all. That pushed up. A spot will handle all this for now. Oh, get only had a three. Oh crap. Um, I don't want Shona. Van Grime. Ah, I just let Shona do it then. Screw it. Dang it. Nice. Keep picking up those dockyards. Ooh. Destroy treacherous architecture. Utilize foreign labor. Though the, the likes of Speer, Heydrich, and other traders have fled the Reich, the legacy remains. Be it Oldensburg and other SS, statues, monuments, and housing in the Speer and design, or even remnants of the Weimar era. This traitorous architecture only wastes valuable building materials that could be used elsewhere. Meanwhile, much of the Reich's building substance is still in ruins, and so are our finances. The solution is, of course, quite obvious. It's time to dismantle these stains upon the landscape and use them to construct for what really matters for the German future. Barracks, arms factories, and research labs, of course. Fear Goring shall oversee the process, after all. Karen Hawk could use some new marble as well. I kind of like excess slave nationalization, total exploitation of the, of the flesh. Repos repossess personal slaves. Industrial efficiency factor. Water down the wine. Inflation increases. I don't like that. Showing our best side. Or even more austerity. Increase liquid reserves. And growth will increase. To fund the Kriegs, I mean, um, doctor production will decrease by 25%. Um, I definitely don't want that one. I want this one. So, we're going to go with excess slave and nationalization. Find the cash. Debt would increase by 12 billion. Oh, that's awesome. Reform the financial sector. There are data ends and bottomless holes in our financial sector. In the both the public and private spheres of managing money, it seems that what the treacherous SS and the treacherous spirits exploited before lay open to us. These imperfections in our budget uh, shall be put to great use. For the restoration of our great country, we, do, we will do anything with these loopholes. So long as nobody questions us, we will satisfy the needs of the fatherland in the shadows. Ireland is moving away from us. How dare they? Hey, we have growth finally. It seems. The inhabitants of the Emerald Isle are suffering from a clear lack of judgment. Maybe the current economic crisis makes them incapable of making rational decisions. Or those cheap drinks they are consuming are, are producing a collective illusion. Whatever the case. The Arctictas has avoided the, the Pact Observer Bill to change the status of Ireland inside the Pact from a Buddhist partner to a Pact Observer. Despite Dublin assuring us that they are not planning to withdraw from our alliance, they can't fool anyone with their lies, it's clear as day they are aiming to move away from our orbit. This blatant attempt at defection in front of our own faces is even more insulting considering they pretend to have all the economic benefits of being under us or under wing without any commitment to keep Europe at peace. We need to let the Irish know that there will be consequences at this reckless uh, action um, that approaching the OFM will result in drastic responses. The Irish are really not getting it, are they? 
Unfortunately not. Terrible. I promise you absolute terrible. So where are we at for debt now? Uh, it's gone back up a little bit, not ideal. So we have a slight bit of growth, and we still have a slight, slight surplus, which is good. Um, but still. And actually, finally, we can we actually finished re nuclear energy re research technology. So, which is finally great. We, for a long time in TNO, you can never get that done, which I don't understand why. But then again, I'm not a mod developer, and the mo developers of this mod do very, very well, almost always. Which pretty much is always. Maybe not almost always, but always. They're very, very good developers. As much as I might bitch and complain a lot, they're very good. They're very, very good, in my opinion. Um, yeah. Find the cash. Loans are always useful, and in times like this, our fatherland must have loans. Such things we can get from banks from within our country and beyond its borders, our government can obtain quick cash, and such cash shall be spent on the recovery of the fatherland. Um, so we can keep doing this far and wide until our country is fully back on its feet. Our fatherland will not need to worry about paying back those loans. They don't need to be repaid. It's enough that our fatherland is whole again. Which actually destroy growth, so excessive slave nationalization first. Our people have too many slaves under their control. Their households must enjoy the fruits of the labors of slaves more than our state could enjoy. Therefore, it is important for us to change the way things are for our people and their slaves. So look at that. We shall start confiscating slaves from families who possess more than they need. We'll set up a limit to the number of slaves each family can use, compensating them for every slave they have to give up. And to make good use of these thralls, we shall place them in the camps for use in the, every corner of the fatherland. That way, the surplus of their labor provided to us uh, by these shall not spoil. Subject status of the Second Ejercito Patriotico and Atlantico. <sighs> Feels so much better now. Um, at oh, approximately 4 a.m., the Second Patriotic Army, SBA, initiated a large scale offensive in which a matter of hours captured the invaluable port city of Barranquilla for its use as a springboard into its national socialist revolution and speed and unit cohesion. The SBA clearly outperformed our expectations and suffered half the expected casualties. Fantastic. Colombia is of immense geostrategic importance to the Reich, with the potential to provide access to the Pacific Ocean, hinder U.S. efforts to promote far-left groups in Ecuador, Peru, and Paraguay, and enable deeper ties between Germany and other South American countries. Further, the SBA's leadership is all but unconditionally supportive of the NSDAP and its privately indicated enthusiastic willingness to join the INAX Pact. 3. Colombian armed forces have so far succeeded in containing the SBA to the Atlantico Department, but lack the heavy equipment and manpower needed to launch a counteroffensive for the foreseeable future. However, the civilian population has greatly has generally been uncooperative with SBA and in frequent encounters with communist insurgents and narcotics traffickers are rapidly depleting military equipment and stockpiles. These issues render the SBA unable to expand its territorial control at present and may become an existential threat to the movement. With a considerable external assistance, the chance of the SBA establishing a national socialist government is minuscule. Recognizing these circumstances, our agents recommend in the strongest possible terms a further escalation of un to a name in Catele. In particular, the scale of armed smuggling operations should be greatly expanded and civilian advisors should be sent to prepare Mises administration. May Germany be in safe hands. Let's see how the Monroe reduction holds up. Okay, cool. So, new foreign policy page. Uh, Colombia lies in ruins, a fragile peace, a frozen war that the nation has been in for the last decade is melted, and Colombians once again fight with the blade and the rifle for what they believe in. Colombia lies directly in the U.S.'s backyard, and we are presented with a unique opportunity to humiliate them within it. By supporting the Second Patriotic Army, our proud to be at odd national socialist brothers against the so-called legitimate government, the fascist New Granadians, and the socialists and the Colombian Revolutionary Union, we can bring a piece of Latin America into the national socialist fold right near the U.S. It is important that we do not squander this opportunity. That's pretty good. Is there any more German drill instructors? Interesting. Second Patriot Economy. Oh, that'd be really good. For 90 days, rebuild destroyed infrastructure. Stabilize them. Fortify the Caribbean. Uh, I've got political power for this one. Five. And are they fighting each other right now? The Revolutionary Union, which we don't like. American Sphere, the Republic of Colombia, Colombo American Cordiality, and then there is us. Italian Sphere right now. Oh no, no, we want these guys. They can patriotic army. Father Acrolio Ario Criolismo. This is the guy we like. The violence. On the shoulders of a giant, a Gary crisis. Hardships. Of course, they got German support too. Vanti Hutti Cabal. Today, the Rakhtakum Minister for the Colonies has received a heavily encrypted message. 
from one of the former colonial administrative administrators in Central Africa who managed to escape from the newly proclaimed Reichstadt. Oh my god! Oh my god! Who managed to escape from the place. Despite our demands for the answers, he has given us a little information apart from the message itself and then disappeared saying that he didn't want to see anything like what he had seen in the days of the coup. After coding the cipher, we understand why the mail was so secretive and the message so potentially dangerous to bear. Claiming to represent a small clique of officers and bureaucrats who still serve the true German government even while trapped within Hutik's hellish realm, Kai Ove von Hessel, self-appointed leader of the anti-Hutik cabal, asked for funds and reinforcements to prepare the ground for a counter coup, promising to reestablish German rule in the African colonies after the madman has been deposed. Our advisors are extremely skeptical about their chances of success, but they still urge us to support them. Everyone knows that Hutik's dream of a racially pure Africa will end up into a nightmare of unimaginable proportions, and according to them, when this happens, the cabal could strike swiftly, securing at least some land to allow a return to the Dark Continent. Despite the low chances of success, it's a stone endeavor worth trying. There are no risks, and says someday the Reichstag will surely collapse with or without our intervention. And when this happens, having a low administration in charge of even a small part of Africa will be enough justification to reestablish a permanent and most lucrative presence in these resource-rich lands. Hutig doesn't know what it expects of him. 48%, huh? Was I supposed to read that? Whoops. Cool. Oh, there you go. Supply them. Make sure you get some stuff, and there you go. Slow news day. The fear stood around by a wall of journalists and media personalities, most of which were working for state media. Cameras flashed as Hemingway Goring's charismatic words were scribbled onto notepads for tomorrow's morning newspapers. His words would be published to the front pages as per usual, however. There was little news to be had in them. Another industrial plant ravaged by the Civil War brought back to function. Another win for the military production sheets. Another uneventful day for the front page. As the fear continued to captivate the media crowd, a sleek black car pulled up alongside his vacant motorcade, which sat parked behind that gaggle of reporters and cameras. Swiftly, three uniformed officers exited the car, scarcely waiting for the vehicle to come to rest. With a visible sense of urgency, they walked towards the Fuhrer, currently cutting their way through the gathering of media. Noticing the interruption of this speech, Goring shot a cold look towards his approaching officers. Yet noticing the look of urgency and worry upon the faces of the approaching men, he restrained himself from lashing out towards the sudden interruption. What warrants this or interruption? The Fuhrer asked with a reserved voice, turning himself and the newly arrived officers away from the newsmen. My Fuhrer, I apologize for the curt interruption, but we have news from Africa. It's Rex Commissar Hutig. Best spoken away from prying ears, replied the most senior of the uh, three officers, seemingly short on breath. Giving the officers a nod, Goring briefly returned <clears throat> to the press to charismatically apologize for his early departure before quickly walking to his motorcade and departing with the three officers. The reporters would have their front page news story. Ill tidings to be sure. Find the cash. Yes. Please. But, uh, repossess personal slaves. Our father has the right to ask everything of the people, especially in the times of great need, and already possessing the slaves. Of every family in Germany shall be the great, uh, short fall before that great need. For too many of our good citizens use them for reasons both small and great, too many for their own good, and too few for the good of the state. Every slave, no matter how they are treated by their masters, shall be placed in a council over the fatherland. And for the fatherland, their labor shall go. For the fatherland, they shall live until they can no longer work. Our people do not need to own slaves. Our state does. Total exploitation of the flesh. Germany needs every hand at work so it may be rebuilt, so it is important for us to put the slaves that we still have to work. We'll still need our own people for the rebuilding, but making greater use of these slaves is less costly than asking much of our own. Uh, longer hours, more tasks, more greater motivation shall allow the slaves to do what needs to be done to end Germany's recovery pains as soon as possible, and if they refuse to do more for our fatherland, we can make them pay productively. Should we lose any slaves, we shall find two to replace them, and we shall keep doing more with these humans' tools of labor until Germany is strong again, of course. There's some stability. And a land board. Work for freedom. Oh, yes, please. Well, we have several prisoners of war in our fatherland that are useless in the camp. It's necessary for, them to, for us to put them to work. As for our enemies of the Reich, they can redeem themselves through hard labor. We should put them to use everywhere they are needed. With this new pool of workers, we do not need to worry about slave revolts or complaints from our citizens. And the Reich would always appreciate the fruits of labor from anyone within it. And if they wish to ask us what their work would do for them, we may tell them this. Arbeit macht frei. 100% true. Beautiful. Happy September, everybody.
but then even more austerity. We cannot afford to waste anything during this time of great need. Our people have to endure great measures, which would restrict their access to useless luxuries and worthless things. For the fatherland regained glory lost in the days before, every citizen must tighten their belts and endure life without the things and comforts they used to enjoy. If we do not give all to uh, the recovery of the fatherland, if we do not make sure that we make all make sacrifices, then we may never become as great as we once were. There's no victory, there's no sacrifice. From the home from. The air screamed with the sounds of the machinery's production line upon production line produced weapons of a conquest and death. Yon hadn't heard the Dresden factory shriek out this much for almost a decade now. Even during the Civil War, the factory had been quieter. What that meant for the future, the slaves shuddered to, his, to imagine. He had seen the horrors of for war for sand. All his beloved Poland was crushed under the Nazi boot all those years ago. No one deserved such a fate. A conveyor belt <coughs> sent more than half-assembled grenades his way, waiting for final assembly. It was more than the idea came to him. It was a foolish, brazen idea, but John had always been a daredevil in his youth. It was the memories of those days in the streets of Loveland, gained him mischief with tinkering with the watches in his father's shop that drove him forward. A modification here, an adjustment there, and the grenades would detonate much sooner. With any luck, they'd take whatever Nazi bastard was throwing them to hell. They made the factories to be as efficiently as possible, producing as much material as they could ring out through the slave labor. For the first time since being sent to the damned place, John was happy about that fact. He was producing the defective explosives at a truly prodigious rate. In the foreman seemed impressed, granting him an extra hour of rest for his efforts. John almost laughed out loud, but kept his composure and facade of submission. John had so long ago abandoned his faith, but he prayed to God now for the nations of the world. He prayed for his contribution to the defense would be felt. One life saved was all he asked for. A just punishment awaits. New German industries, oh yes. And industrial equipment will improve it too. New German industries. At last, we have a surplus of cash reserves, and at last, the fatherland can make use of these. Upon factories, we shall spend the money. Upon new workshops and the new production centers, we shall use the treasures the fatherland has struggled for. And with these great places of uh, labor put in place, our people can invest in them, work in them, and take pride in them. The restoration of our national pride and the recovery of our nation shall depend on every product and service that comes out of these newborn industries. With these, our fatherland can prosper once again. Oh, we can do this one. Dang it. Oh, we have to do this one. Work the blood. Oh, we can work the banks, though. Ooh, I wish we could do this one. We're going to find the cash first. What's going on here? Happy October now. Hey, poverty's not getting too much worse now. That is quite good. <coughs> How much stability do they have already? Oh, they're pretty good. We can, uh, we can send them a little more stability. Why not? Stability is always good. Cut the excess. If anyone has too much, they can always remove what weighs down on them. In the case of our fatherland, we have too many places and too many people to support. Our government cannot handle the strain of such weight. Therefore, the camps that are too big shall be shut down. The workers of the Reich shall have to be laid off if they are serving in places that need to be cutting down their expenses. And our offices shall have to be filled with more workers no matter how cramped they get. Everywhere our fatherland must see the excess removed from its back. In times like these, we, need enough, we cannot afford to carry more than what we need. Makes me happy. Negative growth, that really killed us. My god. 1% um, growth, we could lower that, but they lower this by 3% total. Ooh, science is finished, you're nice. I'm no, hurting us all, but oh, not good. Actually, do we have a surplus? We do have a slight surplus, too, so. Uh, let's we get an increase of liquid reserves by a little bit for now, but still. Need to consume goods goes down, which is nice. Or we could work the banks. Tax them all. Oh, yeah, I can't wait for that one. Uh oh. Please don't crash. Uh oh. Oh, and there it goes Indonesia. It just exploded all over the place. Naval stuff. It's 1960. Carriers. Sh sure. Fresh new idea. Exploiting the people's faith in us works wonders. We must keep doing this. We must produce new ideas for milking more cash out of them. No matter how they may doubt us in secret, it is vital to the fatherland's recovery that we decide see them. Even if they must be blindfolded, the fatherland's glories is greater than our duty to speak the truth to our people. In the end, they will not care. They will instead enjoy the fruits of our deceit. March to the MEFO. The old metallurgish Volksschungsgesellschaft may have been disbanded in 1938, but its legacy, the MEFO bonds, live on. Just deeply hidden inside the Reich's books. Once it means to hide our rearmament from the prying eyes of the British and French, the bonds have proven their effectiveness in the World War three times over. The fear believes such an instrument has proven its usefulness before and will do so again. The new Metallurgische uh, Forschungsgesellschaft and a new set of MEFO bonds are just what is needed to boost our new rearmament campaign. As for paying them back, we'll find a way elsewhere. 
What an oxygen system increase GDP together with inflation, which will cause a decrease in GDP growth for some political capital every month. And properly handle the bills, it will be hell to pay. Growth will decrease, national debt will decrease. Um, what if we don't do that one? Tax them all. The state is only as strong as the resources it wields, even as the kings of old knew. Money is the most important one. <clears throat> By increasing taxes on various goods and services, we can both keep demand for decadent distractions down and fill the coffers with much needed cash. And if that's not enough, we'll simply raise them across the board. After all, higher taxes always mean more cash, right? Nope, oh, there goes poverty rate again. I want them to win. They're going to win no matter what. Work the banks. Oh, we can remove Germany and ruins. I'm going to remove Germany and ruins too. Forced labor. I'll work the blood. Every sweat, every drop of blood, every tear must be used up. Every hand and every mind and heart and soul must be occupied with the duty of restoring the fatherland. From the ashes of the war, all people, German or not, shall go through every trial necessary to rise up to the heavens. No matter how long it may take us, no longer how hard it may be on us, and no matter how painful it is to our bodies, we'll all work to make the fatherland good again. I think I want to do this one. Because we're really doing this one. We're going to tax the hell out of them. We could work the banks. If you don't worry about this one, please go ahead. I'd rather work the blood, personally. Roughly two political power days. Pretty nice, though. How are we doing with the uh, dockyards? Do we still need more? Looks like we probably need more. Oh. Oh, a lot of lag. Um, there you go. Even more backyards. Still in the negative. Hey, the yearly plus is going to really kill off a lot of our debt GDP ratio for now, which is nice, but still. Is that good for us? Honestly, probably not. No, it's not good having a shrinking economy, but whatever. What are you doing? Why are you down here? Working the blood, my friends. We're working it here. All right. Oh, what is this? Who takes betrayal? A devastating blow that such a traitor was under our very noses this entire time is maddening. Who took his killed or driven to the ground the loyal Reich's commissars and any still within his grasp were either his allies or too scared to go against him? After such a brief window of glorious victory, we have once more been confronted with a sting of defeat. We have no time to sit in misery, however. A crisis of this magnitude must be met with all the energy, the fear in the nation. We shall seek to assist and stabilize our position, and once that has been achieved, we will begin the dirty work of punching a little rogue, a Reich's commissar. A fighting withdrawal. Houthi may claim the continent, but loyal men of the Wehrmacht, both from the colonial garrisons and our own advisory forces, are still active in the region. We'll make the traitor pay and retrieve our men at the same time through fighting withdrawal. No doubt the usurper of Africa has already planned to have his own loyals round up those who still fight for their fatherland. Our soldiers will be ready for them. Once initial attempts have been swatted down, we'll coordinate the desperate groups to converge on ports where they can hijack transportation. At the same time, any airships will still in our control will be used to cover the retreat and bomb any advancing columns for as long as can be arranged. This will not be an easy fight, but we'll have our victory to all the same. The Batman's Betrayal. The Situation Room from the Fear Bunker was a buzz of staff officers discussing an emergency operation plans. Aides carrying folds of minute details and party crewings jockeying for attention and influence as they always did, of course. Into this frenzy of action and inaction stepped Johannes Steinhoff, who had hurried from the Reichs, uh, Reichsluftfahrt Ministerium as fast as his staff car would carry him, moving to the center of activity, occasionally giving a hurried Hail Goring, Hail Goring to the passing officer. Steinhoff advanced to where he knew the Fear would be. He found him. His face a dark red in a state more furious and terrible than he had observed since the close of the Civil War. He was on the phone and he was shouting almost screaming down the line. Tell put comrade I want a court and establish it on the ports by the end of the week. Nothing gets in and nothing comes out without our approval or knowledge. Do you understand me? Without waiting for a reply, the dictator slammed the receiver down, hanging up. Shtenov adjusted his sunglasses back to position nervously, so I take it that the rumors are true then? Goring almost sneered at his air chief. They are. This stupid dude who took betrayed us. He kills Schenken and his driven Mueller underground. That's not what's important right now, though, Johannes. What's important is we destroy him. We turn his ridiculous, stupid Reichstadt into dust and ashes. That's where you'll come in. I want bombers of our Quillemain today. Shunov said nothing, just blinked. His words carefully chosen. The former pilot answered, my Führer. If we really have lost the continent, then it is logistically impossible for us to reach any targets within Hutik's territory. Goring's face went purple, and for a moment, Shtenov had the half-humorous, half-grotesque mental image of a man popping like a balloon. Goring did not pop, however, but after a tense moment, he did seem to almost deflate back to, into his chair from which he had half-risen. Fine, then he whispered sullenly, but as Shtenov returned to leave, he spoke up. But tell Marshal Shona to see me at once. I wish to have his advice on the matter. Of course, my Fuhrer. Seriously, what if we don't do this one? I don't want to do this one. I really don't. Leave him nothing. Add Scorched Administration. 
If that darn traitor Hutic believes he will have any access to the resources we deploy to the continent to aid the rifle Rux Commissars, then he is further gone than we initially believed, of course. He'll get none of it. We'll make that absolutely certain. Weapons, ammo, logistical supplies, even pencils and paper for reporting will be either carried off on the earliest plane, or should the option be lost, blown up for all we care, the Albert, of course, always doing its due diligence, and the Galen is admitted to the Fuhrer. That is a precaution, much of the shipments we have sent over were scared, secretly wired with remote explosives. The Fuhrer is willing to overlook Galen's lack of transparency on this matter, in recognition of his prescience. Precious thinking. We're going to really start needing to develop all that stuff, so. <clears throat> Save as many of us as possible. Hal Shank may have been murdered by the treacherous Snake Kutik, but the other African Rikes Kumasar can still be saved. Our sources tell us he's gone underground, however, which means we'll need to find him quickly before either Hutik or the Olafan do. Our investigations into his commanders have revealed that Von Toma is dead and Von Rothstein has fully disappeared into the Congo far too off to the grid to be saved. Galen has begun a massive campaign to save the hunter and return him to his fatherland. A potent propaganda tool and an unambitious stooge in his own right, the fear has plans for the Rikes Kumasar has entered Africa. While well, the dawn's early light, morning came slowly to Hitlerstadt, the sun lazily emerging from behind the horizon, beginning its slow arc across the pale sky inside the temporary barracks of the 12th Infantry Division Stab, however. The air was heavy with tension, the battalion's worth of men lined the inner walls, their eyes trained out of the windows and towards the jungle hazy with the morning mist. Marksmen had situated themselves in the old colonial mansion's attic and the machine gunner teams had occupied the main entrance ways. Private Otto Gans figured the building could hold out against an artillery last siege for two weeks. A siege with artillery could withstand maybe half the time, not bad for all things considered. The news had come in in the middle of the night, when all but the most insomniac of the soldiers had long since passed out. A little spook from the Albera Colonial Bureau. He hadn't given his name, only told them that the Rex Commissar Hutik had gone off his marbles and was planning to arrest all German soldiers on the continent. Well, they all decided they wouldn't be rounding him up without a fight. It was so early morning, early enough that Hutik's goons must have expected the Germans to still be asleep. They came from the jungles in groups of twos and threes, camouflaging dark greens and blacks. The werewolves, Gantz remembered, that's what they were called. They were sure to move like wolves on the hunt at any rate. They're going to die like wolves too. They might be formidable in a pack, sure, but when they had man, but when had man ever allowed mere curs to dominate him? Guns raised his rifle to the shoulder, picked the closest interloper to train his aims on. Not today! Yakta ele alia est, which I never say right. Block it, Africa. If the traitor Hudig wishes to have his little kingdom in Africa, then let him have it. He will not leave us alive, however. Uh, we will make quite sure of that. Using the loyal ships and aircraft that have led the continent to rejoin the Reich, we will establish a cordon around our former colonies. Nothing will ever leave the continent without our approval. We'll even extend our searches to Iberian and Italian vessels, and if the government's to protest too bad, we'll not have an affront to the very people of Germany survived thanks to the incompetence of scheming of our former allies. Ah, let's hear the luck today. Infantry is... Oh, happy 46... Oh, 66, I should say, everybody. Happy 1966. Oh, we want that. Infantry stuff, probably. Steal the resources. While the situation seems hopeless, our best men have already begun finding solutions. Who takes decaying states heavily reliant on its abundant supply of rare resources, mainly being extracted through our equipment and sites, which cause us millions of racks market and thousands of slaves. Well, it sounds better, men have found out that since we made the site, we have still have the info on them. We know exactly how much it was producing, where it was, and most importantly, how much money it could make us. We shall send our best men to extract as much of the resources as they can before shutting them down and getting out of there. And even if, if it isn't worth the effort, look on the sick bastard's face when he hears the news. We'll make it all worth it. Good. Oop, that's all out of time. Um, this stuff is too out of time for us. Well, we wanted to make all this stuff really good then. There you go. Undermine the traitor. With all the bureaucrats and officials who have survived who took betrayal and bent their knee to the new mad king of Africa, this by no means indicates any sort of love for the men. Indeed, as erratic behavior and growing instability means that any one of these officials might soon find their head on their chopping block in one of these days, naturally they will look for any attempt to undermine the new master when they think they can get away with it. We'll provide that when, and even throw in a helpless dose of possible house to destroy the dry stop from the inside. Hal Galen is a devious fox indeed, and no doubt has dozens of schemes on his mind. If we can't destroy the madman's Reichstadt through an invasion, we can still help to pull it down upon itself. A toy set adrift. Friedrich Schutz uh, wiped the sweat off his, that had collected on his face. His bare arms were now slick with perspiration, as much of it as their own from his face, serving on a submarine. Schultz reflected not for the first time. Was uh, not a physically pleasant assignment. And for what? He sure as hell couldn't discern a point in their present mission. But try the African coast, and prevent anyone from leaving or entering the Gross, Af Gross Afrikaner Reichstadt? 
Who would want to get into that hellhole? It wasn't like anyone was trying to do business with the madman and Quillamane. That much was at least was certain. The crew of the U-3122 hadn't even seen the outline of a foreign convoy yet. Schultz had gone to the captain with, a, uh, with his questions, but the skipper hadn't had, uh, had been any more in the know than his crew. He had told Friedrich that the order had come directly from Gross Admiral Putkammer himself. Well, Schultz wasn't an officer, but he wasn't, wasn't stupid either. If the order was coming from the high up on the chain, then it must have originated with the Fuhrer. That still didn't get him any closer to the truth, unfortunately. And it seemed like every mystery was going to remain as much. Or as such. Schultz wiped the sweat from his brow again. Politicians were always playing their inscrutable games, he supposed. As a soldier of the Reich, he didn't have much right to complain, but it still irked him all the same. Christ, what a dull job this is. I'll turn that place into a veritable fortress. Einheit's pack loses the Emerald Isle. World has reached via the, via the diplomatic office today, announcing that Ireland has decided to strike it out on its own. The message from Teosha Lemas was polite and placating, apologizing for the sudden departure from our alliance and thanking us for years of national friendship. It's obviously just an apologetic attempt to avoid Wehrmacht boots on Irish soil, but it's quite obvious that they had a little choice in the matter. The Terra Simus Tuomi, of the communist leading paramilitary organization, the Irish Republican Army, outmaneuvered the Irish Army, which had been tutored by our own Wehrmacht for decades to forcefully occupy the northern counties that had previously been a slice of the UK. Tuomi's demands have been a complete annulment of all of our ties to the Reich. Also, there would have been a civil war for the fate of the nation. It seems the spineless Sviana Fael party were unwilling to fight for their place in the world and now have caved into the treacherous Bolsheviks' demands. And to think, people always say we're crazy when you say Bolsheviks are sabotaging us. Fall Vorbeck. Das Reichskolonie Sud Afrika exists. Oh, this would have been really good. We can go to straight to war them if you only this one. Please go ahead. This would be fantastic if we could do this one, but we cannot. Last continent. For all of our effort, for all of our blood and sweat, it seems that we've been denied an entire continent thanks to the madness of just one man. For all of their posturing as a shield against our advance, the OFN has never come close to dealing with us as uh, such a blow as Hutek has managed in just a few weeks. To think that we, lords of Eurasia and rightful masters of the world, could face such a setback and from one of our own is disturbing to say the least. What's well, enough sulking. Regrets and sorrow do not win us our empire and will not reclaim it for us. We have bigger concerns than the kingdom of some lunatic let Hutek's empire shatter to the winds while we resume our hegemony across our own continents. By the time we return once more to Africa, it'll be uh, as unstoppable conquerors once more. Beautiful. Yeah, that sucks. How's uh, the Boer Republic doing? That sucks. is doing okay. Fight for home, huh? Oh, 50%. That's pretty good. You can invest into it, but... Oof. Not ideal. The piss and fear, huh? In times like these, if you're often wish he still had, had the easy relief that his injections had brought him, instead of the company of his needle hover, he found himself with the less pleasant company of the Reinhardt Galen, who eagerly waited the Fuhrer's commands. Who has gone mad, Goring began sharply, though a certain Galen already knew of the situation. If he believes his greater African right can keep the savages in line without her help, he's more than welcome to try, though he'll have a difficult time at it, if I have anything to say about it. This insolent of national socialism should not be permitted to stand, not for a moment longer than it has to. Goring continued when he tried to... When he first heard of the news, Goring's mind had immediately flown to ousting the upstart and overtaking the Dark Continent with the German boots. Sure, that was the route some of the militaries would have preferred, but Goring knew that at this stage, it was impractical. Make the phone calls and payments you must, Galen. I wish to be sure that Hutig knows what it means to make an enemy in Germania. Who was so calmly, it was easy to see the rage behind Goring's eyes. In contrast, one can see nothing behind Galen's young sunglasses, as he currently nodded towards the po most powerful men in Europe. Right away, my Fira. It'll be a simple task, just capitalize on many of the problems that are existing in German Africa. It would not be too difficult for a man of Galen's talents to bring Hutig's abomination to the ground. And then after making sure Goring had nothing else to share with him, Galen turned, moving to leave the room. Before the door closed, the Fuhrer gave one last order to the man. Make the bastard hut. Hopefully we can do that. But we'll see. Prepare the army. Um, yeah, I read this one earlier, so we'll do that one. And ooh. Oh, we can't do that one too. So I think I might just end the episode here, and then in the next one, I'll and my Africa. You know what, let's read this last one first. We'll read it first, and then we'll end it as we do prepare the army. A rendezvous in Lieberville. Uh, Qua Uwe von Hassel arrived at the meeting point early. The Abwehr man arrived exactly at the agreed upon time. Von Hassel figured that he wanted as little chance of being spied as possible, and subconsciously wondered if he should have taken the same precaution. Nevertheless, it was too late to fret upon the matter. Von Hassel straightened his back and gave the code phrase that they had agreed upon beforehand. Good morning, Hale. Is your mother in today? The man in a quiet and non-committal manner responded flatly, No, she is away attending her poppy garden. The agent watched as Von Hassel deflated a bit, now more at ease, now that the man's identity was confirmed. The obvious agent continued, Undeterred. Let us not miss words, Hale. What precisely do you require from my employer? Guns? Bombs? Von Hassel? A pause for a moment. He spoke on the several Central African 
A general is most unhappy with the old SSS coup over Africa. Few have been willing to commit to anything solid, however. Von Hassel's career in the Abwehr meant little to soldiers, who were committed to following the orders of their fellows. The Belgian industrialists in the era, however, could prove much more tractable as an ally. Hutig's authoritarian and strictly national style rule had chafed them and hurt their bottom line. It would be a strong alliance if Von Hassel could bring them to the side. Let's start with Reichsmax. And then, of course, we'll have the uh, New Age of Science. Never before have our generals had such an influence on policy. They did win us a war, after all. Naturally, they expect their opinions to be heard, and lately they've been clamoring for more funding. A few of them, more imaginative of them, have been digging up old ideas, ideas discarded as impractical and unfeasible and too dangerous to sanction. These ideas may not lead anywhere, but it doesn't hurt it doesn't uh, hurt to have it, uh, doesn't do any harm to let them dream. Send some phones down to our research departments to entertain them. But, like I said, we're going to end it there. If you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we see what else we can do with Herman Goring. Thanks for watching. Have a great fat daddy rest of your day.